Hey, ESPN, I'm Jack. And I'm Miles from the Daily Zeitgeist, a daily comedic news podcast that answers the question, what if Stephen A. Smith spoke at a normal volume and his opinions were based on fact and not completely insane? This probably isn't the best way to describe this. No, you just negated the two things Stephen A. Smith is known for. Okay, what if The Daily Show was hosted by us? Yes, but who is us? Okay, I'm Jack. I'm the co-founder of Crack.com. And I'm Miles. I love soccer and get very nervous when I'm pulled over by the police. He's also a former lobbyist who quit politics for comedy. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, we cover news, the president, pop culture, and we're both very big sports fans. I'm actually named after my grandfather, legendary NBA coach and ESPN alum, Dr. Jack Ramsey. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm named after Miles Davis, a legendary <laughs> heroin addict who is not my grandfather. So search the Daily Zeitgeist. If you don't know how to spell Zeitgeist, like most of us, just type in Daily Z. It'll figure it out for you. On Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. And now... Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, hit the dirt. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me a po 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 Here's Jalen Rose. What up, dog? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cold check-in. And we... Our Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. What do we do, Mr. Rose? We get the fine individuals that have supported this program, whether podcast, radio, or television, exactly what they want, and exactly when they need it. Perfect. Let's start right now. It's Wednesday, and every single Wednesday, we celebrate females as part of our Woman Crush Wednesday. Every Wednesday? Every single it's Wednesday. It's not a fad? Nope. It's not hype? And every We're day not jumping we celebrate on the women in our lives. No However, doubt. today is special. It is the International Women's Day. Jalen, what is your message to the women of the world on behalf of us? We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for your sacrifices your amazing contributions to all that we do because we're not walking this earth Without. if you're not giving birth. And I also appreciate you accepting us in our flaws. Yes, indeed. And each other. Yes, indeed. It happens. Your wisdom, your intelligence, your work ethic, your beauty, talent. Just kindness, giving, caring. Thank you. Dirk Nowitzki. Joined a list of people that only need be mentioned by their first name. Okay. Kareem, Carl, Kobe, Michael, and Wilt. As NBA players that have scored 30,000 points. Jalen, is Dirk's legacy overlooked? It can be when you score 30,000 points and you mention them on the players we just described. Mm -hmm. You've been a multi-time all-star. You've played on Olympic teams. You won a championship. You won an MVP in the NBA. This overlooked versus overrated type of conversation is really just for us media types. There isn't a thing that he could have achieved or happened in his career that he didn't get a chance to accomplish. He's gotten maximum dollars. Yep. He's gotten maximum exposure. Yep. He gets to go out on his – he gets to pick and choose when he retires. He played 20 seasons for the same team. He's had 15 crazy haircuts. Yes. Yeah, so uh, he, he has the type of career that – people dream about when you start to look at his 19 and soon to be 20 years in the league it's 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 easy to sort of forget how many different generations of Mavs teammates he has had like like right now he's got Yogi Ferrell and Seth Curry in the backcourt it wasn't that long ago he was on the same team as Tim Hardaway just some teammates he's had listen to these names Tim Hardaway Danny Manning Dennis Rodman Antoine Jameson, Steve Nash, Ty Lu, Juwan Howard, Jason Terry, Lamar Odom, Sean Marion, Jason Kidd, Derek Fisher, Vince Carter, Amari Stoudemire, Rajon Rondo, and Darren Williams. Is that Jason Kidd? He's a coach now. Oh, yeah. So is Ty Lu, also a coach. Mm -hmm. Dennis Rodman. Who knows mm -hmm. what he's up to now? But think about just the experience. Hopefully, not that leading he has any had. international trips. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows anymore? Shout out to Dirk and the Mavs. Good for them. And being the seven-footer that took the torch from players like Tom Chambers or Detlef Shrimp who, or Arvita Sabonis that were big guys. Why they got to be white guys? 6'11". Why they all got to be white guys? Because those were the original stretch fours, just like okay. Christian Leitner in college for Duke. Okay. That was, I'm just saying, they all have something in common. Um, but the best two stretch fours, in my opinion, are Dirk, and the second one is uh, Robert Ory. Who isn't white? Mm. 
Would you consider Tim Duncan and Dirk Nowitzki to play the same position? Yes. Which would you consider a sort of – if you're ranking all the basketball players, who would you pick higher? They both have the approximate same amount of points and rebounds. But then this is where we part ways because one of them is an elite defender. Mm-hmm. that's going to have many more blocks, mm-hmm. many more steals, many more all defensive first, second, third teams, many more accolades on that side of the basketball and oh, five championships. So Tim Duncan. You know what thing I love yeah. about Dirk? He's already said it. I'm coming back next year. He's like, I don't want to hear about it. I don't, you know, he's like, I know we're not going to contend. I, you know, I know everyone's going to be a lot of attention on me when I score this 30,000th point. I just want everybody to know right now I'm coming back next year. That's what I'm doing. I love that about him. Shout out to Dirk and all the Mass fans. I beat him in the most improved race in 2000. Good for you. Most approved is a real trophy that you got. It's a real thing. Like, that's a real trophy. Congratulations, Mr. Rose. Your, your legacy was overlooked. It was. <laughs> it was. My legacy is yeah. happening with you, sir. You only, you only, you, you average double figures like every single year you're in the league, except for what, two? I think two or three, maybe? Well, well you know you legit at doing it if you could do it as a rookie. Yeah. So point. every other chance you get, maybe turbulent and opportunities change and stuff like year. that. He didn't look like he was going to turn into Dirk, but he did. Rest of peace, track the trailer, who they were traded for one another on draft day. Books and maps. Oh. Russell Westbrook scored a career high 58 points on 39 shots against the Blazers. However, he and the Thunder lost. The Thunder are 4 and 8 when Russell takes more than 30 shots. Jalen, are you okay with the 39 shots from Russell? This is one of those things that lead to hyperbole because if I ask you the opposite stat and say, What's the team's record in games where he's taken 12 or less shots? You wouldn't know. It probably never happened. Correct. So I can also give you a stat that says they win 80-plus percent of their games when he has a Mm triple-double. They need him to be aggressive. They need him to score. And they need his volume as well. Because for me, it's it's, it's, it's not as simple as should Russell shoot or not. It's, okay, who else are we going to give those shots to? And who can create a shot? Oh, that's, Russell's the only person. That can that's a shot. one of the things people who haven't played at the elite level don't understand. It's a privilege to get a play call for you, and for the other fourteen guys to set picks, to be a decoy, to do all of the things that take for you to get a bucket. Like those mm-hmm. fourteen guys got to want you to shoot the ball. The coach has to allow you to shoot the ball. So when people say, oh, he just out there jacking or he just gunning, well, it's because the other guys in the locker room, including the coaching staff, like, we need that guy to shoot. Yeah, if you are truly jacking, gunning, freestyling, freelancing, you're probably not going to be on the floor for too, too long. And so in Russell's case, what other players off their team, and I'll give Ola Debo a hat tip, but I, I wish he did it more. I wish he was more aggressive. But I'll give you Ola Depot. Besides those two players, what players – isn't it an accident when they take three or four more three or more dribbles? There's no one on the roster. I, there's just no one on the roster. And I want everybody to remember that when you're watching a Thunder game, unless it's Oladipo or Russell Westbrook, if somebody takes more than three dribbles, it's an accident. I, I mean, I don't think Robertson's done in his career. Oladipo, of course. Cameron Payne, I would say, before they traded him. But yeah, someone's got to bring the ball up when Russell's out, but... So because of that, and I'm the MVP of the league, of course I'm the best player on my team, and I could create, and I could score, and I'm getting more rebounds than you guys. Like, when you're getting more boards, that's a few more shots because you can grab and go. Mm -hmm. And so they need his aggression. They needed his 39 shots. I was watching the game, but what a lot of people aren't going to talk about is he actually made 21 of those. Yep, which is a great percentage. He scored 58. The sad thing is they needed 68. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. The, I don't think the problem is Russell Westbrook. It's just he's <laughs> the only like he's the only thing to point to. But 21 of 39, if you're shooting over 50% from the floor and you put in 58 points, it's hard to poke holes. And he missed four of his last five attempts. You could say, like, when you had Kevin Durant there, the opportunity cost of Russell shooting was perhaps that could have been a Kevin Durant shot. That's much more of a conversation than Robertson and Oladipo. 
and Adams and Cantor. I would probably rather have a Westbrook shot than a shot from any of those. Yep. He's finally in the news, Jalen Rose. He may be released. Is it finally time to talk about Tony Romo? We are not going to waste sports fans' time talking about a subject for days, weeks, and months until news takes place. Does Tony Romo play for another football team? No. Keep it moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. <laughs> Bill Polian said that they had Tom Brady as a gr- round. Keep it move. moving. We be moving. He went in the no sixth round. <laughs> How many people passed over him? I always, I always love revisionist history. I love it so obvious when you like, oh, yeah, we had Tom Brady. We knew who he was. Brandon Marshall has agreed two-year deal with the Giants. Hit the brakes. You put him alongside Odell Beckham, mm-hmm. Sterling Shepard, Shepard yep. who was a rookie last year. I think he's going to give them a level of not only veteran leadership and toughness, but he wouldn't have been on the banana boat. They probably wouldn't have gone to Miami if part of that group included a veteran. They still need to address the offensive line and figure out what they're going to do with the running game. Joe Mixon met with the Lions, Saints, Bengals, Browns before Pro Day. Hit the brakes. So here's what we have to decide as a society. Are we really passionate about violence against women to the point where if somebody has that and we can acknowledge that the circumstance did take place, are we going to hold it against the player even if they're a performer like Tyreek Hill? Are we going to hold it against the player when they play on our team? See, that's what has happened here that I've worked, that I figured out. There are two things that are taking place in the NFL with the domestic violence cases. There's Mixon and Ray Rice who are on video. Mm-hmm. So therefore, since we're a visual medium, people are going to take those two circumstances a lot more harsh versus Greg Hardy and Tyreek Hill, who isn't on video. You just mentioned Brandon Marshall, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not picking on him. This is not personal. He has a history of domestic violence. Doesn't come up that much. Because probably he's playing on your team. Or you've seen him. And I applaud this. He went through his mental health situation. He su- he seeked help. He became a spokesman. He did all of the things that Ray Rice did. But the difference between Ray Rice and him is that Ray Rice's situation is on video. If the media and fans aren't going to hold it against Brandon Marshall, who has a distinct history of domestic violence, it's hypocritical for a lot of those same people to question whether Joe Mixon should be on somebody's draft board or not. It shouldn't take a video to create outrage. It shouldn't. And so this is what we have to ask ourselves as media and as fans. Are we passionate about the topic and don't like it regardless, so therefore these players should be treated as such? Or if we like the person, are we going to overlook it? And or... Am I going to overlook it because that person plays on my team? Or am I going to overlook it because that person performs really well on the football field? We are in the fringe of the league. Oh, it's real easy. Oh, no, we would never stand for that. But when you're a, a, a top-level performer, oh, oh, I believe in second chances. Because you're going to hear a lot of this around the draft as it relates to Joe Mixon. He's not on our draft board. Brandon Marshall's been on multiple teams in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And he's not Tyree, the only one. Tyree Hill. There's no video. Chiefs fans, what do they do when he's back to receive a punt? They're, They're cheering his name. They want him to score a touchdown. He's an electric player. And I'm not blaming the Chiefs fans. This is where the league now has to create some level of responsibility, discipline, and ownership to how situations are going to be dealt with whether or not the accusation is caught on camera or film versus when it isn't. And as a fan, it can be complicated and conflicting. 
You know what I mean? You want your team to succeed, and you want great things to happen for your franchise, but sometimes the people that you stand up and cheer that you want to score baskets and touchdowns for you, you don't want to stand up and cheer what they've done in their personal lives. And that's, that's a conflicting force that you kind of have to deal with. Let's move on. There may have been a man-sized giant penguin on this planet during the dinosaur era. Keep it moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. You know, I really wanted to talk about that one. Tim Tebow got an argument with an ump today. Hit the brakes. Yes! 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 Let's talk about Tebow. Did you see it? He was. It was a one and two count. The pitch was clearly low and away. Because there's one thing that Tim Tebow has. It's a good eye. You know what I mean? He, he, I mean... He's, what do you, got, he's got a good feel for the strike zone. It's great if you are playing baseball or you're a quarterback if you have a good eye. The problem is he doesn't have a good arm. Please continue. It was clearly outside, and I feel like this umpire was biased against the great Tim Tebow because he thought he's a baseball purist, this umpire. And he thought, <laughs> he thought what is this man coming here making a mockery of my profession, of this spring training, Grapefruit League, single A, whatever he's playing. So he was biased against Tim Tebow. We need justice for Tim Tebow. I don't want to bury the lead, so I want to answer a question right up front. What was he from the plate? This is his first step back. Okay, so he got ejected after that? No, he didn't really get in an argument. He kind of looked at him funny. Okay, so what did he do in his other at-bats? I don't know. Okay, my point exactly. He was over three. Okay, keep it moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. <laughs> They're selling Tom Coughlin related merch for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Keep it moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. <laughs> the Lakers have officially announced Rob Palenka as the general manager. We've talked about this topic. Keep it moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. <laughs> Deshaun Jackson is reportedly drawing interest from the Cowboys and the Patriots. Hit the brakes. <laughs> Don't do the thing where you rail against media types because you've been a media type basically as long as you've been a basketball player. No, I just want to remind no, you that. no, no. This is what I'm railing against. Reports that people use to create conversations that aren't accurate. When a player gets released, all the media does is list five teams that they want to talk about anyway and say, no, who would Brandon no, Marshall no, be no, like no, around no, the no, past? No, no, no. I know what they do because I'm a media guy. I know what they do. They call his agent. And you know whose agent – is doing creating leverage, making it seem like there's a market for Deshaun Jackson. So you call the agent who is a source, and then the agent says, well, all these teams are interested, and then you report it. You've sourced your report. But all then the media members turn around and do is try to say, what glamour team would they fit on? Of course. How, how many times have we said when somebody got released? Oh, what Adrian Peterson, go to the Patriots. Oh, Deshaun Brandon Jackson. Brandon Marshall, go the to Patriots. the Patriots. Yeah, Deshaun course. Jackson, go to the Patriots. Cowboys, don't forget the Cowboys. Don't forget the Cowboys. That's my point. Don't and, forget the Cowboys. And here's where I'm going. What are the two teams that are on this report? The Patriots and Cowboys. That's right. And here's where I'm going. How many times was it discussed on television or radio that Brandon Marshall sh- should go to the Giants? Zero times. Okay. Are you sure you don't want to talk about that giant penguin? Sure, you could talk about it. I don't want to. That kind of ruins it for me. We have a colleague that we both love and respect very much named Ramona Shelburne. Yes, indeed. And once this drama happened around the Lakers, the Ramona Shelburne pass signal went up. She dropped a very long, excellently written, informative, investigative report about everything that's happening around the Lakers today, Jalen. Okay. We know this story involves family, betrayal, lies, trusts, boards. You've seen it all. First Jeannie takes over the Lakers, fires her brothers, fires John Black, and elevates superstar Irving Magic Johnson to president of basketball operations. Ramona's piece goes behind all the machinations and the lawyers and the boards and the trusts. A lot of rich people stuff I didn't really understand. I don't know what a trust is or a board. <laughs> I know the very basic examples of what those things are. But this is what I found really interesting. Ramona wrote, quote, A few days before his death in February 2013, Dr. Buss summoned Johnson to visit him in the hospital. Johnson had sold his Lakers shares and become part owners of the Los Angeles Dodgers in 2012, seemingly moving on from the dream of a role with the Lakers. Quote, this is from Magic, 
Jeannie had called me and told me to come up. Then he wanted to see me. And he said it again. He said, quote, I always thought you guys would run it. We were both sitting there crying about it because I knew he was right. Back then, it would have been a lot of resentment. It would have been difficult. Magic Johnson's claiming that it was Dr. Bus on his deathbed saying that he always wanted Genie and Magic to run the team. Your thoughts on that, Mr. Rose? It seems self-explanatory. Magic has not only been a, a superstar champion and Hall of Fame performer in uniform for the Lakers, but beyond that, he's held almost every position that a former player possibly could with the organization. He's been a part of ownership. Coach. been a part of decision-making. He's been a coach. He's been an ambassador. He's been an advisor. He's been a season ticket holder. So I understand the level of that relationship where he basically looked at Dr. Buss as a second father, credits him as being somebody that took a kid from Lansing, Michigan, opened up his eyes and showed him how to function in Hollywood, California. So from that, I'm not surprised to hear the news and is really just playing out seemingly like he wanted. One thing I liked about this from Ramona is uh, it really detailed how Magic Johnson and Dr. Buss used to party a lot together. Like, I didn't realize that, you know, they were getting it down like that. He would, every Saturday he would work out and then he'd go over to Dr. Buss's mansion. They would go to USC games and just party. Good for them. It also detailed, remember, remember when Phil was, thought he was head coach of the Lakers? Do you remember that? Yes. When Mike D'Antoni was hired? Mm -hmm. A little weird back then. All the details was like, oh, it, basically there was a faction between the, the bus relatives. It was Jeannie saying, like, oh, Phil, we're going to hire you. And then Jim and John behind her back going and telling Mike that they were going to hire him. And a lot of that, too, and uh, as you see the story plays out, there was a resentment toward her relationship with Phil that we're paying him top dollar to coach the team. He's in a relationship with my daughter. We're not getting a discount. Mm. He won championships here. He didn't put a ring on it. So there probably was a lot more rub there than we realized. And I think that is what led to ha Jim having the opportunity to slide in when he did and get the position that he had. And then he gave himself the ultimatum. And then that was a, a death blow that you never do as Vladi Divac two years from now. And so now all of a sudden for public consumption, he became the face of Lakers dysfunction mm -hmm. when she was actually the person in power. But since she's more beloved by the media and he put himself out there like that, she was able to slide clean and let him take all of the bullets of why this team isn't doing so well. She didn't have to endure it. Another thing that's so smart that she did is she put Magic in power. Laker fans, you know who they're not going to turn on? Magic Johnson. It's just not going to happen. It's, just, it's really not. They go 0-82, like Jay-Z said. They go 0-82. Magic still be fine. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers was on a radio show. You know, again, sort of like these guys with their podcast. He was on a local radio show, just feeling comfy feeling with his myself. guys. And, you know, they brought up Mike Lennon's contract. Mm. Aaron Rodgers does well. He makes about $21 million a year, a little, oh. little around that between yep. 2021. But now the market is such that perhaps Aaron Rodgers is more valuable than that. Mm -hmm. And he just happened to make a, a remark that confirmed that. Like, hey, maybe we should talk about my contract if this is the market right now. That then gets spun into a national story that he then has to sort of like respond to and kind of walk back. Is there too much scrutiny put on everything that athletes say? It's not just athletes. It's all of us. It's just athletes have the profile and have to deal with the punishment or the consequences because we're required to be role models versus certain professions and jobs and careers out there that don't have that same responsibility to come with their task. And so whether it's Draymond Green saying what he had to say on a podcast about the Knicks owner, whether it's LeBron James saying what he said on the podcast about the 15,000 women that he have crushes on, a few of them that are actually married, and now Aaron Rodgers. This is why, after doing this for a handful of years, we affectionately say, don't get fired. Don't get fired. Because we understand speaking into these microphones, 
while it looks casual, once it gets out of this room, it, it becomes very quickly into a story. Very quickly. Yep. We have an announcement. Uh oh. Love announcements. The Minnesota Timberwolves have signed Lance Stevenson to a 10 day contract. What? Lance is back in the National Basketball what? Association. Do you think what? he'll get a long term deal? I don't think, based on his personality, and some of the things that he's done on and away from the floor, that he's going to get a long-term deal. But I do think he has the kind of game that should warrant him consistently being in the league for the next few years. It's kind of like when we talked about Russell Westbrook. Like Lance is a guy that could dribble the ball three times and it's not an accident. You know that there's value for that. He can get his own shot. If you give it to him with five seconds in the shot clock, he's excited about it. He's not upset about it. Now the percentage that he may make that shot is not high as you would want. No. But he'll get you a shot. I think that when he was on the Hornets, I think he like statistically had, if you qualify it right, the worst three point shooting percentage in the history of the three point shot <laughs> with a certain like you know limit attempts. Oh, Lance. I wish you the best, Lance. It is not a black and white world, it is not a yes or no world. There's a lot of gray area in this world. We explore this gray area with a segment we call Zero to hundred. Are you ready? Sure. Zero to hundred. How much do you believe Brandon Jennings? When he says that he was just pointing at Jared Dudley, telling him to relax and to calm down, he was not making finger guns at Jared Dudley. Well, the visual is what it is. So I'll say 50%. You believe him 50%? While he did point the finger gun, that won't be followed by an action. You mean Jared? Wait, are you trying to suggest that Brandon Jennings is not going to shoot Jared Dudley? Correct. What? You wait a sec. Uh, you don't think that J- Brandon Jennings is going to shoot Jared Dudley with a real gun? I don't think that's going to happen. I I'm, can, I, I can, I I'm can shocked. really go on wax and say that. That's I'm, not, I'm that's, so don't, don't over, don't overreact to this. Now, if this was Gilbert Arenas or Javaris Crittenden. <laughs> Who knows? All bets are off. All bets, All bets are, are off. off. There may be extra security. Yes. He said he was trying to have Jared Dudley calm down because Jared Dudley's not that type of guy. Just putting that out there. Well, it was a hold me back moment, so it didn't look like anyone was that type of guy. No. If you're talking about a physical altercation. And again, we joke about hold me back and NBA players restraining themselves in, in an altercation. That's actually what disciplined players do. Mm-hmm. The ones that lose their cool and start to fight during a sporting event are the ones that usually don't make it to play it at the, at the elite level. Can I just point something out about this incident that kind of shocked me a little bit? Is Jared Dudley went with the chest bump, but he followed up with like a like a, a belly roll dance move, and it, it kind of like I, I kind of one of those what? soft move or boff move questions. Like, are you <laughs> trying to be tough right now, or are you trying to like dance? It was like a little like, uh. <laughs> it wasn't a headbutt. It wasn't a punch. It wasn't a push. Uh, it was a belly roll. Stretch mark four. He's working on it. Luke Walton called his Laker team soft. Zero to 100. How much it would it bother you if your coach called your team soft? 40%. The one thing that as you start to get older and or mature, because... Sometimes they don't go together. No. Sometimes your critics are right. And in this case, when I watch the Lakers play basketball, Luke's right. People drive into the basket. No fear of anybody getting in their way. And I'm glad you bring this up because he also said that the Lakers were the type of team that guys come into to play and get their offensive numbers. Is that a real thing in the league? That's a real thing. So you'll yeah. circle up and be like, oh, we're playing so-and-so. Hey, I'm getting 30. Let me tell you something. The year Kobe had 81 against the Raptors, we were the second-worst defensive team in the league. We gave up 55 to Vince. But no, we gave up 55 to LeBron. Probably gave up 50 to Vince. People was coming getting their numbers against us. That's how it goes. There have been times I went to play places and got numbers, too. Zero to 100. How surprised are you that Carmelo was out of the game with a sore left knee? If you listen to this program, I've already told you around late February, 
Early you, March. You set your watch by it around I this time I said this year. last year, and it happened. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Those aches and pains. How that, many games in April does he play? None. Zero. Those aches and pains that you fight through as a seasoned mm-hmm. veteran, as you, you don't start fight through for this lower team. Lower and lower. Is your chances to get in the playoffs get lower and lower? Those, this, the pain tolerance gets lower and lower, This too. is where everybody that doesn't mind healthy players resting, this continues to feed it. Zero to 100. How cool was it of Dwayne Wade to rent out a Waffle House for his teammates? It was 80% cool, but I've seen this be covered on television. And as somebody that frequents the Waffle House... I want to talk about this, too. Give it to me. I have. I think I know where you're going. Give it to me. First off, we didn't have to know it took place. Thank you, Dwayne Wade. That was a good PR thing you did to, mm-hmm. to play the media. I like that, number one. Especially after the PR you've dealt with all year. So you're, you're giving the player scene. angle. I've got the fan two, angle on this. Two, no, here's the real angle. You don't need to rent out Waffle House. Thank you. It, the no. Waffle House is where people go no. every single day. No. Do you know what's happening? There's a line of people outside that Waffle House right now. They're like, I get my breakfast here every single day, and I can't go inside because the heat because there's 10 heat players in there. You guys can have two tables over there, and we can use the rest of the restaurant for the regular people that just want to enjoy. They're covered and smothered. If anything, we should be getting on their case because they feel like they need to segregate themselves from the population and eat at Waffle House. Thank you. I've been there a million times. You You don't need to rent it out. This isn't the back private room at a steakhouse. Right. This is the Waffle House. I need to rent the whole thing out. And then they try to flaunt it like, yo, we rented out the Waffle House like they're buying out the bar at the club. It's the Waffle House. And that entire bill was $250. Yeah. Come on, Dwayne Way. Let the people eat the waffles. <laughs> they it, spent, he did it in celebration of National Pancake Day, too. No, he did it in celebration of, man, I shouldn't have left Miami. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that was about. The ju- <laughs> they spent more money on the jukebox than they spent on the food. You don't have to rent out a Waffle House. You can just walk right in. First come, first serve. I'm saying. Especially when you're Dwayne Wade. And they're not going to make you wait for a table, Dwayne. But here's the other thing. You don't got to let us know you did it. Yeah, you can just do it for your teammates. Did you really do it for your teammates, or did you do it for your brand? Who snapped it? He did. Big shout to his cab driver, though. I loved his cab driver. Big shout, D-Wade. At least trying to do something to rally yeah. the troops. But, but next time, you don't have to rent. Just call ahead and say, you've got a big, you're Dwayne Wade, I've got a big group, can you give us a section of the restaurant? That you don't do. Oh, good point. You never call ahead. World don't need to know you're coming. Just That's go. good point. It's a Waffle House. I'm not famous. I don't know these things. I would have called ahead. Zero to 100. How much does it concern you that people are out here on this planet dipping slices of pizza in milk and then eating it? Like, how concerned are you for our species when you hear that? Well, a few things. Okay. I could go health nut on this and say, man, that's a lot of cheese. That's a lot of pepperoni. That's a lot lot of of bread. A lot of dairy. I can almost say, what percentage of milk is that? Is that 2% D-milk? Is it um, organic? I could go. I mean, is it coconut milk? Almond milk? So I could go that route, but in a vacuum, because I saw Jamel Hill do this on Sports Center, I just felt like it was a boiler maker for your stomach. Because that's what it would be for me. Between yep. I would I would be probably having stuff coming out of both ends, and that's not good. Yep, yep, yep. I think we're gonna end it on that. Cause I'm grossed out now. New segment alert, Jalen Rose. We've dabbled in this before, but now it's really happening. It's time for soft move or boss move on Jalen and Jacoby. Are you ready? Doesn't even need to be explained. Terrell Owens was not voted into the Hall of Fame. So we, he went ahead and made his own Hall of Fame jacket with his career stats on the back. What? 15,934 yards, second in NFL history. 153 touchdowns, third in NFL history. 1,078 receptions, 8th in NFL history, 6 Pro Bowls, 5 first-team NFL nominations. Is making your own Hall of Fame jacket a soft move or a boss move? It's a soft move. Ooh, I'm going the other way. It's a boss move when somebody else does it for you. When you're the person that accomplished so much, it's not for you to puff out your chest and scream as loud as you can at the top of your lungs to tell us how great you are. That's for everybody else to do. He's going to get into the Hall of Fame. You sure? And 
I think based on him doing his own jacket, a boss move is you sit back and not say nothing. You allow it to cook because you say, I know I'm going to get in. That's a, good that, point. that's a boss move. That's a good point. When I did look at the back of the jacket, and I was like, wait, of all the wide receivers in the Hall of Fame, there's only one man that advanced the ball further via reception than Terrell Owens. That's got to include probably 50 people. And this dude's not in the Hall of Fame? He'll get in. Nicki Minaj is hinting that she will not respond to Remy Ma's diss track. Soft move or boss move? In this context, it's a boss move. Mm -mm. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. If I was an MC, the rap I grew up falling in love with, some of my favorite MCs were all-time great when they were challenged. Of course. Karis won, Nas, so many battles. Roxanne, Shantae versus UTFO. LL like there, cool J4 there, times. There's so many battles. Sure. And I love them. No Vaseline, Ice Cube, 100 Miles and Running, NWA. I'm not going to name them all. So I'm all for a great diss. Okay. But when Drake dissed Meek Mill, I specifically said on this program, he shouldn't respond. I felt like he needed to respond because Drake is the bigger name, mm -hmm. has the larger profile, and on paper is the more accomplished rapper, but not necessarily a better MC with bars because they both spit. In this case for Nikki, she can look at it as though I ain't beefing down. I, you know I don't I have don't, anything to lose. You know I stand so by the therefore, don't beef down rule. if I do respond, all I do is give her a chance at a victory. If I don't respond, I'll just let it rock. I I live by the don't beef down code, but Remy Ma's on the come up, and Remy Ma's been around for a long time, and it hurt, and it was a good diss track that hit home, and I feel like it is. Un a scenario in which the Nicki Minaj must respond to on wax and also Remy Ma didn't do this out of the blue Remy Ma was responding to some sneak dissing that Nicki was doing so if you're going to sneak diss me and then when I just come directly at you, you you have to come directly back I'll give you guys a piece of YouTube footage with bars with what? bars if you just want to watch it you haven't seen nothing is it a prison documentary? no not at all oh. Google or YouTube Papoose as he goes through the alphabet, he's spitting. And he's who? Oh, Remy Ma's husband. Exactly. Mark Cuban said, I hope Magic Johnson and Rob Palinka go down as the worst president and GM in the history of the league. Soft move or boss move? Boss move. That's competition. I love it. Let's just move on. Jay-Z gets out of a like town car driver Uber black situation with a wine glass in hand. A glass of wine full of wine and then walks on the streets of New York City with it in hand while being snapped by paparazzi goes to his friend's house. Soft move or boss move? Boss move. He's married to Beyonce. They have baby blue and twins on the way. And he's in an Uber dolo without multiple bodyguards and security and people following him. And he has a glass of wine? I have so many questions. Not tripping at all? I have so Not many worried questions. about spilling it in the car? That's what I'm worried about. No doubt about it. That's, That's what I'm worried move. about. You know the Uber driver or whoever the driver picked him up was, looked at him was like, I can't tell him not to have this glass of wine in here, but I'm very concerned about my upholstery right now. Still a boss move. Being so famous that you can brazenly just not obey the law is a boss move. There's not a cop in New York City that's giving him an open container ticket. Not a single cop in New York City. University of Central Florida's new football area is going to have a lazy river for the football players. What? Soft move or boss move? It's a boss move by the university because... I love a lazy river. What schools are now able to do is recruit people based on the merit of how much money we got, how much we have and are willing to spend on our program. So look at all of these nice things that we have with our facility. Mm. But you get to enjoy them the couple of years that you're here. You're not going to get paid to perform in your sport. And these things will be here when you leave. If you come. Great point. There's a doctor who did a study and said that weed is most effective when taken rectally. 
rectally, rectally administering marijuana to yourself. Soft move or boss move? Soft move. No doubt about it. <laughs> Do you think it's going to catch on? Snoop Dogg, <laughs> Cypress Hill, <laughs> Red and Meth. They rolling over in their graves with this news. And all of them are alive, kicking, and healthy, and breathing, and pretty sure partaking as we speak. Rick Carlisle was talking to Dirk Nowitzki about the increased pressure that's going to be on him. And Dirk Nowitzki responded, quote, I make love to pressure. Making love to pressure. Soft move or boss move? Boss move. Yeah. Those who are able to endure turbulence but still find the discipline to focus on the task and block things out in whatever area that you perform in, that's a remarkable trait. And that's one of bosses. The Suns mascot dove on the floor while the game was in play on his side of the basket to what? retrieve something that had rolled onto the basketball court. What? Soft move or boss move? Boss move. Try not to interrupt play. I liked it. There is a sense when you're a player of truly diving versus sliding. He dove. He dove. He sold out. Yes, it did. He did you know a what? Dennis Rodman. I want to give the mascots a shout-out. flop dive. Because of this, a lot of times I look at the mascots and I think to myself, like, this person can really dance. Like, this person can really just jump off a trampoline, do two flips, and then dunk it, and then land on their feet. Like, the mascots are extremely talented, and they're often overlooked for their athleticism. But I'm not a fan of the Clippers looking like Toucan Sam or Fruit Loops. Are you, um, are you sure... Rectoral administration of marijuana is a soft move. Don't get fired. <laughs> Dylan, I grew up in Amherst, Massachusetts. Yes, indeed. UMass Minutemen wasn't exactly a huge basketball powerhouse until a gentleman named John Calipari came to town. Yep, yep. And he turned the Minutemen into a tournament team, and he pushed out some players into the NBA. Marcus Camby, most famous. Lou Rowe, my favorite. But he went on to Memphis put a bunch of players in the NBA, and what he's doing right now in Kentucky is unprecedented in the history of college hoops. It's hard to find a team without John Calipari's fingerprints on it in the National Basketball Association. Have you seen anything like this covering basketball? I have not, and we will not. When I start talking about these players, his naysayers, and rightfully so, are going to say, he's only won one championship at Kentucky? That's a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. When we felt like he was going to go to Kentucky and basically have his pick of the litter as it related to McDonald's All-Americans, you would have thought at this point that we'd see more collegiate championships. Would you say he has been successful at Kentucky? Absolutely Extremely. successful. And here's why. That's my secondary point. It happens a lot more in football where you see players are talked about being a system quarterback mm -hmm. because they don't think it may translate to the NFL. That happens at multiple positions. Quarterback, yep. tight end, receiver. Well, the things they're asked to do in college a, there's a large gap. don't necessarily translate to the NFL. Sure. So there have been multiple coaches that have gotten criticized because they've had really good collegiate players, but they didn't necessarily become knockout pros. In collegiate basketball, as well as collegiate football. John Calipari has shattered the mold. He's no Michael Jordan either, letting the roof be the ceiling. This ain't that. <laughs> like, he's out of this world. This is, this is unprecedented what we're seeing him do as a head collegiate basketball coach because he runs his program like a professional basketball team as much as possible. What do you mean by that for someone who has not played in college or the pros? I remember the verbiage of recruits coming to your living room telling your parents, we're going to make him be the best man he can be. We're going to teach him about family. Discipline. We're going to teach him about discipline. He's going to get an education. We're going to make sure when he leaves this house, I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to take care of him. And he's going to be a better man than he could have possibly be if he'd gone anywhere else. I'll treat him like one of my own. But you never told me that you're going to get me to the league. You never promised that. John Calipari tells his players, I know what it takes to get you to the league. As a matter of fact, 
Let me give you a laundry list of players I've put in the league. It's so long. And not only are they just collected NBA checks, these are productive players. Starters, all-stars, go-to players, big-time shoe contracts, playing on teams in the playoffs. How about this? Nine former Kentucky players, more than any other school, were in New Orleans for All-Star Game festivities this year. Think about that. This year. Nine. This year. That is insane. Nine out of 24. Derrick Rose, for example, one of his former players who you don't even look at in the upper echelon was actually an MVP. Played for him at Memphis. How about some of the current players that are on rosters putting in work? There are 22 of them. Enos Cantor went to Kentucky, never played a game, and got drafted in the lottery. Never p- say it again for me. Just say it again. I want to hear it wash over. Wash Enos over. Cantor went to Kentucky, never played a basketball game, and got chosen in the lottery. Because John Calipari's on the phone, and he's like, trust me. And you know what GMs and people around the league are saying? John Calipari said he's a pro. These guys aren't just in the league today and out tomorrow for the most part. How about, on average, Cal performers are getting 14 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists. So if you took every one of their Kentucky players that are in the league right now, there are 22 of them, they're averaging 14 points. Think about that. That's no duds. Let me name you some of the players that went to Kentucky that are playing quality minutes. Anthony Davis. DeMarcus Cousins, Carl Anthony Towns. The future of the league right there. The future of the bigs in the league. John Wall. MVP candidate, fringe MVP candidate. All-NBA caliber performer. Mm -hmm. Eric Bledsoe. Mm -hmm. He's getting a big deal in Phoenix. Devin Booker, knockdown shooter. Again, Devin Booker in five years could be the best player in basketball. Oh, by the way, he basically has 50% of the Phoenix Suns roster. Yeah. That's what made me think of this. I'm like, wait a minute. Earl Watson is like, he's basically, they just wear Kentucky blue. I'm like, wait a minute. Tyler Eulis gets the steal? There's. And then he passed it to Devin Booker. Right, there. Passed to Devin Booker. (laughs) Playing against uh, Willie Colley Stein. And and, and Brendan Knight's there. Man, James Young. I'm like, wait a minute. (laughs) So there's more. Enos Cantor, who I mentioned. Julius Randle, who just had a triple double Mm -hmm. for the Lakers. Terrence Jones, who just got signed by the Bucks. Brandon Knight's been a starter, not a starter, in Phoenix. Nerlens Noel just Playing got picked great. up by Dallas. Looking great. Getting numbers, showing promise. Michael Kidd Gilchrist plays on a playoff team in Charlotte. And this is one of my favorites right here. Jamal Murray. Don't sleep on Jamal Murray. I know that a lot of people aren't up late watching Denver Nuggets games, and I understand why, but if you do, if you just happen to be a break in a Warriors game and you switch over to the Nuggets game, Jamal Murray's going to hit a three. And don't just watch Plumlee. And Jokic, who you affectionately call... The Birch Brothers. How about Patrick Patterson? Getting minutes for the Raptors. Getting them five rebounds a game, almost seven points. Trey Lyles for the Utah Jazz. He's going to be playing in the playoffs this year. He's a rotation mm-hmm. player. He competed in 61 games this year. Willie Cauley-Stein. He's, now that Boogie's gone, all of a sudden Willie Cauley-Stein is the person that we wanted him to become. So much so that they're taking pictures like we better without him. Look at this. Look at our team camaraderie. <laughs> Look at, Look at our culture. Fear. When you have so many... We, we, we were going bowling when Boogie was around. Yeah, when it's 22 of y'all, all y'all can't be 100. That's just, that's just how it goes. <laughs> There's more. That hope to move into the upper echelon. Tyler Eulis. I mentioned the minutes that he's now getting. Yep. James Young playing on the Celtics. And then you got a couple of players trying to fight for their NBA lives. Andrew mm-hmm. Harrison, who played well for Memphis, when Mike Conley was hurt earlier in the year, he was yeah, playing good buckets. minutes for them. DeAndre Liggins is playing for the Cavs. And hey, Kyle Wilcher. Is he playing? He was playing before they got stabilized at the three. He was getting minutes. He was. He started a couple of games. And Kyle Wilcher for the Rockets has only competed in nine games. So these aren't just players that are taking up roster spots. These are just stars. Right. And so for Cal to have this level of productivity from the players he's coached is outstanding. Look at your favorite team. Look at your favorite coach. They may or may not be getting it done in college, but he's getting it done in the league. You know where else he's getting it done? Right where you had us before. In the living room with the recruit and the recruit's family. He can just take this list, turn it around, Slide it across the table and say, this 
is your son's future. Today, on Women Crush Wednesday, it's all female callers. Let's listen to the first one. Hi, Jalen and Jacoby. This is Gina. My husband, Richard, listens to you guys all the time. I have a don't get fired question for you. If you could steal any NBA wife, which one would it be? Keep getting them checks. See, Richard listens to the show. He knows that we're not going to engage in that. We're not going to engage in that one. I'm not even, nope, don't even, no names, no nothing. Gina. We appreciate the call. Big Women shout, Crush Gina. Wednesday. Shout out to your husband. Richard knows that Jalen and I are not exactly like LeBron James. We're not going to sit here and fawn over somebody else's wife. Not at all. Off I remember market. being at the Super Bowl in New Orleans. And everybody was enthusiastic about halftime. And halftime came. Everybody was rushing into the suite. I'm rushing out of the suite. People were like, where are you going? We're trying to see Beyonce. I said, man, I ain't trying to be out here salivating over Jay-Z's wife. I enjoyed that performance. Let's listen to the next voicemail. Hey, Jalen. Hey, Jacoby. What up, Doe? This is Amy from Houston, Texas. Big shout out. My husband, Todd, turned me on to your podcast, and I just have a quick question. Jalen, if you were to take Jacoby to D-Town, which I've spent many, 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 many summers there, what are the top three things that you would ask him to do or C, before he left to get that genuine Detroit experience. Big shout-out, daily podcast listener and viewer of the show. So you're taking me to Detroit. Yes, indeed. Three must-see, hear, do things to make sure I get the full Detroit experience. You can't just do three. That's fair. Just like any major metropolitan city. You don't have to rank them. There are things that I would want him to do on wax and off wax. Okay. Let's stay with the on wax. Places that I would want him to go. But Jacoby's bar is one. Absolutely. But here's the thing. Like, being in Detroit, you have to go downtown. And that encompasses Greektown. Mm -hmm. I love Greektown. It encompasses the Renaissance Center. Took some money out of Greektown last time. If you like to gamble, which you are willing, as you just mentioned. I enjoyed it. They no might, doubt they about might it. not let me back in. Got to take him to uh, Easter Market. Never been. I would also like to take you to... Uh, Is there a, like a school I could visit just to get to JRLA, know JRLA. No doubt go. about That'd it. That'd be great. Tuition-free public charter high school. How about the Motown Museum? And you know one other thing I want to do, Jalen? Got to go to Coney Island. I, of course. I want to try the seafood pizza. I make fun of the seafood pizza so much. Yes. But you you were so enthusiastic yes. about it. I might have to give it a try. Yes. Thanks so much for the call, Amy. Shout out to Todd, who made Amy call. What's happening is people starting to, they're gaming the system. Hey, we you like know, it. They're gaming the system. We like Woman it. Crush Wednesday, let's listen to the next female caller. What up, though? Hey, Jalen Jacoby. This is Davina from Miami. Do you think that Kawhi is too boring to be MVP? Keep giving the people what they want. Thank you for the call. So... Here's what has happened in today's society. And I'll use a player like Victor Cruz as an example. Okay. I don't think he's ever been an all-pro. He did win a Super Bowl with the Giants, but he wasn't the number one receiver. Could have been an all-pro the first year. Had a long career playing in New York City. Mm -hmm. Is my backdrop to where I'm going. I think it's been like four or five years. Right? He He had a long career playing in New York City. So everything he did was magnified including scoring touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So now all of a sudden when he gets to the end zone and he does the salsa dance. In the New York market? In that market. Fans and media start to salivate over that. Of course. Because we're we're a lot more simple than we truly believe. Ask the Kardashians. Don't you think the Kardashians sit around and be like, they made us billionaires. Like, this world ain't the smartest. These ain't the smartest people. If Joel Embiid didn't have a funny Twitter account, like, he'd be a very good prospect that get injured a lot. But now, because he's, like, kind of funny on Twitter, it's like, oh, he's the future of the NBA. And so what I would like to tell players, if I went to a rookie symposium in the NBA or the NFL, I would tell them two things. Number one, befriend the media. Because usually when you do that, 
they'll never talk bad about you. They'll say, well, when he came on my show or when I met him one time and or if they have your number in their phone, they won't talk bad about you. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would encourage players to do, if this is your personality, be flamboyant. Be outgoing. Because the Victor Cruz example, now I see him in ballers. See him yep. in commercials. Yep. I see him doing a lot of different things. And where else do you see him? Oh, getting released by the Giants. But I don't see Julio Jones doing that. Nope. I don't see A.J. Green doing that. But to answer her question, I want to say this. Kawhi is boring. Yes. He would tell you he's boring. However, he is not too boring to win MVP. Because the, the MVP, sure, it might be a, a piece of the of the... It might be a small variable in the equation of whether or not you vote for this person, but it's a very small variable. Do you know what variables matter? Offensive performance, defensive performance. You know when you're... Team performance. I agree with you. And you know for all of those who are old enough to watch the Chappelle show when they were playing basketball and he was talking about Prince playing ball and when it was game, he said blouses. Mm -hmm. Right? What can't get lost about what you said about Kyrie versus what I said about a player like Victor Cruz is you can now game the system. You can make your production look like it's on steroids. Didn't you just say that about Joel Embiid? Yes. Jokic got four triple doubles. Who? Second year, just like Embiid. Wait, I'm sorry, who? Playing in Denver on a playoff team. Wait, who? And so there is a level of we are intrigued by the people that wow us personality-wise, but there's no such thing as his game being quiet. He's a 50, 40, 90 player. He's a lockdown defender. He shoots oh, yeah. threes. He's clutch. He guards multiple positions. His game, if, his game is loud. If you ask 100 fans in Bede or Jokic, you're going to get 95 in Bede's. If you ask 100 people that cash paychecks with an NBA logo on them, you're going to get 100 Jokic's. Let's listen to the next call. Hey, guys. This is Emily from Pennsylvania. Um, I'm just wondering if you guys think that sometimes coaches and managers will push uh, players to come back and play before they're ready after an injury, like because they're so vital to the team or something like that. Um, I would love your input as a future therapist. Thanks. First of all, pursue your dreams. Yes, indeed. Get pursue it. Pursue your dreams. Round and round, I'm Become a future it. therapist. Yes, indeed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a, a question on the same lines of hers. Sure. Do you think that it has gotten to the point where athletes are no longer pushed out onto the field or court before they were ready as they were in the past? I got this term from my godfather, and it applies in a lot of ways. Which godfather? Because I know you have like 18. J. Mack. Whose pictures hanging over my left shoulder? He always talked to me about how the older you get, the longer the walk was to school. So every generation looks back at the previous generation and feels like they have it easier. Mm -hmm. That's just how it works because there are so many advances in medicine and technology and just attitude and how we see things. But one thing that he said that was really valid to me that stuck was. There was a time when you could punch the youngsters with brass knuckles to encourage them. Mm -hmm. Now you need to punch them with fur gloves. Probably just shouldn't punch them at all, to be honest. But my point is, there was a time when you play football, or when I played football in middle school, for example, you were almost deemed as being salt. You want some water? What? Water? Like, you, you want to rest. Like, something's wrong with your arm. You, you better get back out there. That, something's wrong with your head. That's a stinger. And so now you start to get older, you realize, well, that's a concussion. Like, these mm -hmm. are things that now can affect me long term. So with that being said, not purposely in particular in college and or pro, but it's still going to happen on an amateur level because you have people that are amateurs in a lot of situations administering the scenario, whether it's a coach um, a lot of times, depending on if it's a public school, they may not have the quality amount of doctors and people on hand to actually care for and treat the individuals. So on those levels, I think it happens a not, lot more than it will in collegiate sports and professional. Thank you so much for the calls, ladies. Uh, we'll take your calls every single day of the week, but we will take only your calls on Wednesday if you call 985-80-JALEN. We give the people what they want. Part of giving the people what they want is just humbly asking 
What do you want? Literally. We do that every single day on our Twitter feed. That's at Jalen and Jacoby, and we get responses. Would you like to answer some of the questions from the people to give the people what they I want? I would love to, sir. Jeff wants to know, is Lance Stevenson going to lead the Timberwolves to the eight seed? I'll answer this one. No. Not lead. No, no. no, no he's not going to lead. He's not going to lead anything. He might lead him in turnovers for a couple games. Yes. But that's about yep. it. That's yes, about it. He might lead some cheers from the bench. Yep. He might lead the team out of the locker room, out of the tour bus, you know, because he's uh, didn't have to shower. But he'll always have a place in our heart. Okay, Scooby Dolphins fan has a question. I just want to say, one of our producers, Alex, shout out to Alex, is a Dolphins fan, and he very well may have made up Scooby Dolphins fan Twitter account just to ask this question. He ain't doing all that. The question is, who is the oldest person on the set? Is it Reggie? The answer to that question is Jalen Rose. Yep. Jalen Rose is the oldest person here. That's why... Jalen Rose is the oldest person here. That's why our show is so fly, so forward... And so diverse because of the individuals in this room. Adrian wants to know, will you ever bring the podcast on the road, like after the season, or not going to be able to do it? Adrian, we hope to. We want to. What? Money making Mitch. Mitch. Is Dirk your top 10 of all time? He's not in the top 10 of all time. 2011 was legendary. Nope. He's not in the top 10 of all time. Nope. It, there's a recency bias there. You know what I mean? He scores his 30th. We're all watching the highlights all day today. 19-year career, MVP. I'm not ready to give you my top 20, no, but yeah. I would think that he's probably 25, but not in the top 10. Probably not in the top 20. Is he the greatest international basketball player? Yes, he is. Over Sabonis. Yep. Detlef Shrimp, yep. Oscar well. Schmidt, yep. Steve Nash. Can we go Steve Nash there? Steve Nash, two time MVP. That's not fair, though. Let's all be honest. Like, come on, it's not fair. Like, Canada's basically America light. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, are you truly an international player if you grew up watching NBA on NBC and speaking English? No. Nope. They don't have NBC in Canada. I know. Now you're checking facts. Is that what you're well, doing? I only live there. I appreciate you. Pas Def has this question. If you're going to try to win an eating contest, what food would you want to eat? Popcorn. Great answer. I don't I I would never try to win an eating contest. You know one thing I don't like? All you can eat buffets. No. Nope. I don't need that. I don't need that. No. Nope. I'm, I'm I've never I just order some more if I want some more. I want my plate specifically to me, for me, and brought to me. You sound like yeah. I sound when I complain about being in first class. No, but no, 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 no. People no, no, walking no, no, no. past no, 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 and no, 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 using no, the bathroom no, 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 and putting no, no. their bags in first class. I don't want a buffet because I could just order more. People There's... usually do that so they could get more bang for their buck. Jalen, whether it is the four seasons on Sunday or it is the cheapest buffet in Vegas, I have no interest in any sort of all you can eat situation. Me either. On any level of the economy. Agreed. People be putting their hands all through the food, too. Next. Remember life before sanitizer? Deuce Biggie wants to know, Jalen, do you think Larry Brown is the reason why Darko never panned out? No, I can't blame him for that. Yeah, I'm going to go Darko on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go. Probably has a lot more to do with Darko Milich's so ability glad, to I'm play glad, basketball. No, I'm glad you went here. Because I didn't. It was some guy named Deuce during Biggie. the draft. This term comes up a lot, and it's used improper. Good. The word bust. Good. I like this one. Now, did you just read? What did you say? Darko didn't do. They asked a question. Deuce Biggie, Jalen, do you think Larry Brown is the reason why Darko never panned out? So let me tell you what Darko did do. I remember him getting a forty million dollar contract by Minnesota that's to play long, basketball. That's a lot of money. When I ink that deal, I pan out. Yep, yep, yep. I made out. it. I'm not a bust. When I buy mom a house, when I have zeros in the account, when I just go to the ATM sometime when nobody's around just to look at how many zeros in my account Do for no mean, reason to be how many silly. Years in the league, Darko Milic played ten. Ten years in the league. What? That's three less than Jalen Rose. Oh, it didn't pan out. What? Oh, he never panned out. 
I don't have the exact million dollars that he made over the course of those 10 years, but something tells me it's a nice number right around 50 or $60 million. He panned out as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Next question we have. Bus don't make it to the league. No. Is from AK. Two years from now, is CP3 a clipper? Yes. Really? Huh. Why do you say that? Five-year, $209 million contract he's going to be able to sign this summer. Is Doc Rivers the coach and GM in two years? Yes. Is Blake Griffin on the Clippers in two years? Yes. Is DeAndre Jordan on the Clippers in two years? Yes. Do the Clippers win a championship over the next three years? I think who they end up sacrificing, and it's going to be a big mistake. Shame what happened to J.J. Is J.J. ready? Shame what happened to J.J. I would love for the Clippers to trade for Carmelo Anthony this summer. It's too late. Someone's got to trade for Carmelo this summer. Too late. Someone's got to trade for they Carmelo They should have did that summer. in February. You want to really do that should've. while you have J.J. I think J.J. would be nice with the Spurs or with OKC. I'm just throwing that out there. Oklahoma City would be nice. Reggie just told us that Darko retired to become a boxer in 2014. Here's the thing. I followed this story. Around that time, I don't think Darko was living his best life. (laughs) I don't think it's appropriate to say that he retired to become a boxer. I kind of think that he played himself out of the league and then did whatever he could to, to do get something else athletic yeah yeah like you know i think i'm not if you look at some videos look at some youtube videos of darko do just just google darko beer just do that see what comes up the czar wants to know czar does patrick ewing deserve a statue at msg and does zebo deserve one at fedex forum let's just individually approach those we just so happen to have the senior statue correspondent, not just for ESPN, but just for the world, for the species, the senior statue specialist, senior statue specialist, Jalen Rose. This is a good question. Patrick Ewing, get a statue. In a pecking order. What? Yes, but in a pecking order. What do you mean? Because I think, and I know I'm going to forget somebody, but it's okay. You are. I think Clive Frazier deserves one. Willis Reed. Willis Reed deserves one. Then Patrick Ewing, in that order. Frazier, Reed, Ewing. And for those that want to fight it, Carmelo Anthony will get his number retired by. I don't know why you keep New bringing York that. You Knicks. bring that up just to make me mad. And he will be in the Hall of Fame. Me mad. You know it makes me mad, and you bring it up every time just to make me mad. You do that every time. Because it makes people argue at me. It's working. People are like, what you mean he going he's to the Hall gonna, of Fame? Yeah, he's going to the Hall of Fame. There's no doubt about that. There's no way his number is going to be up in so, the rafters. So let me tell you right. It might not. It might be. You know what? You're right. His number might go in the rafters. It's just not going to have his name on it. <laughs> if the next great Nick comes by and decides to be number seven, his number will go in the rafters. It just won't have his name on the back. So you just said Melo was going to the Hall of Fame, right? Yes. What jersey do you think he's going to be wearing? It just makes me so sad. <laughs> it's my job it just to makes forecast. Me so it's just, sad. It's just my job to forecast. Oh, why you got to end the show like that, Jalen? My job to forecast. Why you got to end the show like that, Jalen? People will be like, he ain't going. What you talking about? Oh, he's going to the Hall of Fame. And if he doesn't go to the Hall of Fame, like Terrell Owens, he'll make himself a jacket. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. We'll be off tomorrow. We're cooking yeah. up something for the future. We'll be back on Friday to give the people what they want. <laughs>